Hello, I'm Ben Buddyslack, and I'm the founder of The Swan Song Project. The Swan Song Project is a charity that helps people facing the end of their lives to write and record their own original songs. I've been doing a series of interviews with songwriters where I ask them about one of their songs, a bit about how they wrote it, uh, for a songwriting tip that might be useful to new songwriters, and also for a song that's meaningful to them in some way relating to bereavement and grief. Uh, this episode features Chris Dover, and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, today I'm here with Chris Dover. So thanks for joining us, Chris. Hello. Uh, uh, yeah, cheers for having me. <laughs> that's a pleasure. It's always good to speak to you. Chris is um, Chris is a great songwriter. He's a frontman of the band CPSD. Um, mm-hmm. and he's, he's also uh, been a friend of mine for a long time. And he's been a big supporter of the Swan Song Project in the past. And we were just talking about Jeez. two years ago now. Um, Chris did a, a gigathon. Where, how many gigs did you? Did you, did you and I, I was trying for 100. I ended up doing 64. In and that was in 48 days 48 days yeah yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah I, was, I still feel like a bit of a failure for not getting 100 but then at the same time i look back and go i still did 64 gigs in that, 48 yeah. Days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was a crazy amount of, uh, of performing and yeah yeah raising money and uh promoting the project so uh we're eternally grateful to you for, for that chris uh no no you're welcome it, oh. it was a it was a pleasure to do um through, through that, that was actually through quite a difficult time as well, uh, personally. Um, so it, it was nice to have something to focus on that felt, yeah, you know, felt encouraging and and keep me going. Yeah, yeah, it was a great thing, man. And yeah, you did a really good job of it, and we really appreciate it. Um, so let's. So if you've seen the interviews before, I um, mm-hmm. have songwriters on, and we do them in three sections. So first, I'm gonna we're gonna talk, play one of Chris's songs, and we're gonna have a chat about that. Uh, then in section two, Chris is going to share with us a songwriting tip that might be useful for new songwriters. And in section three, we're going to talk about a song that Chris has chosen, what's meaningful to him in some way relating to bereavement. So um, I'm going to pass you over to Chris to introduce his song, and then uh, then we'll have it edited um, after that. So uh, what's what's the name of your song that you chose for us, Chris? So my song is called Do You See the Truth? Uh, and this is literally like the, the first song I wrote this year. Uh, and probably the newest one that I've completed in its entirety. So, uh, yeah, this is literally the first time anyone's hearing it outside of a practice room. So, uh, yeah. It's one song exclusive. So. Oh, it's a new year starting but the same old me. I'm sad here about World War Three. I'm trying to work out how to pay my bills when everything about me says I'm mentally ill. My friends are burning, people ain't learning. It's hard to keep the hope when the greed leads the sermon. Stop the planet if you wanna get off, but do you wanna get off? Simon said, How long ago? The people they don't want to know. And I've been lucid all along. These fears they in alone you see the truth and you think by now I'd have learned my class. But they still learn from a misinformed past So we'll use what we have to educate And it might not be too late And Simon said how long ago the people 
Yeah, great stuff, Chris. That's, uh, do you do you see the truth? Do you see, well, working title. Working title. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. So, uh, what can you tell us about writing that? You say it was the first song you wrote this year. Yeah, it, so it was uh, literally just into January, and I was so I've got a friend who's uh, an amazing uh, artist, uh, does like comic book art and stuff, and he lives in Australia. And we, I used to live with him when he, when he lived in Leeds, and. Uh, we stayed in touch he did, he did a bunch of stuff for my previous bands and stuff uh and and i was chat he lives in canberra and i was chatting to him around the time when all the fires were going on over there um and the, obviously like there's a, re, since the start of the year well from the end of last year there's been lots of stuff in terms of climate change and stuff like that going around and it was it was kind of out the conversations with him that i just kind of i woke i just woke up with this kind of idea in my head and i was doing the washing up and kind of singing this so i mean the majority of my songs as as you know are kind of i just write kind of from a personal this is this is you know my life kind of thing but it was the conversations with him and what was going on obviously the not knowing how it was going to affect him and the kids and stuff uh, where he was it got pretty close to where he lived and he would send me pictures and videos and stuff of, you know the sky just being like black almost and stuff it was like pretty scary times and it just it got me thinking about the whole climate change thing and 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 there's a little bit like there's a little bit of kind of phrasing wise that came from kind of my headspace at the time as well because uh you know ups and downs as we all have uh, kind of mentally so there's a little bit of that stuff in there as well but it was just me i don't really do politics i don't i don't really do you know that kind of songwriting mm. but it's probably the closest thing that i've written that you know i think has any sort of political uh, is it politics i suppose it is politics isn't it yeah any sort yeah. of uh, any sort of social consciousness kind of <laughs> mixed in with it um so yeah it's just i don't, I don't know it's, again it's me just singing about my life at that time but kind of fueled by this conversation about the kind of climate change denying side of things uh, more than anything and that there's there's almost an old guard that just can't seem to listen to facts and <laughs> i think that's true across all kind of governments and 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 all countries at the minute uh, which is just a very strange time to be alive do you not think <laughs> yeah yeah I, I certainly agree with that one <laughs> yeah. um so you say was were the the lyrics like particular things that were said in this conversation or was it like you kind of well, summarized it, in a different way or? i think it was just obviously i was as i'm talking to him and he's showing me these videos and, and telling me what it's like there and then so i'd obviously take an interest in the news side of things of it and i'd watch and see like the australian prime minister at the time was just literally not almost not acknowledging it uh and going around forcing people to shake his hands for photos and and things like that and it was uh i see you know an awful lot of an older generation that you know will rip greta thunberg to pieces 
for, you know, because she's out there trying to make the world a better place. And I don't, I don't see just because she's young doesn't mean that she, you know, that she doesn't know what she's talking about. And if anyone should care about it, it should be her, surely, because it's her, her and her generation that will inherit what's left. So I just, yeah, I don't know. I think, I don't know if I'm articulating it very well, but it's, it's, it's kind of, it's, it was based out of that kind of idea, this, this strange notion that you've got this older generation of, uh, and it's not all people of an older generation, but this weird, this weird culture within it where it's almost, they're purposefully trying to make it hard for future generations. And it's, I just find that a really strange thing. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Um, and, how did you come about it musically? How did you go about anything on, I just remember you, you, at the start you said about you were like doing the dishes and started singing it. Was that like, did a bit of tune just come to you or did you have? It, it's, it's weird because I was almost rapping it. Oh, I, right. I, 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 yeah, I like, I would never rap in public. I'm terrible at it. <laughs> but I love kind of, I love hip hop. And, and like with the CPSD stuff, a lot of it actually comes out of, out of, uh, you know, trying to do like more hip hop style underlying kind of electronic stuff so uh, I think there's been a couple of the songs I've written recently that kind of come out of me almost kind of I just want to write more words I think that's one thing I've been trying to push in my songwriting is is to try and not just settle on verse chorus done kind of thing and, mm -hmm. and I think because I as you know I used to play in hoodoo operators and hoodoo operators all that stuff was very kind of traditionally rooted in in country and blues so it was like there was lots of repeating verses and i didn't have to once i got the basic idea down i didn't think i didn't have to think as much how to articulate any further on into the story mm. so you could say your piece you sing your chorus you can then say your piece again but it can be the same verse and nobody questions it in blues or country music in that respect uh which is lovely because you can write song after song after song really quickly but i think i've been trying to push myself just to kind of write a little bit longer verses i tend to find if if i kind of wrap the idea through in my head i actually come out with more words and then slow it back down when i put it to music which oh, then gives me three verses four verses as opposed to one and a half or two um and yeah, musically, it, yeah. musically we we are you know this song when we play it is it's fast and it's it's loud and it's aggressive and it's almost it's probably the punkiest thing that we've done which is again a it's again messing around with different yeah different styles um but yeah i was yeah, just gonna, I, I was just gonna I, say I, for, for anyone listening to this who doesn't know um so that was obviously a stripped down acoustic version but cpsd the band is how would you how would you describe it what's the the genre uh, no, we have been fighting so hard to work out what a genre it is. It's, we're basically, we're alternate rock, I think. I think, but we also have electronic elements. So there's, you know, if you kind of, I always kind of say mix Queens of the Stone Edge and Depeche Mode, and that's kind of where we try and land. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but there's also, there's always the blues kind of stuff in there as well. There is blues riffs and there's, you know, you listen to so the first song that we put out, Dubstep Blues, which we put out a couple of months back is it has an almost kind of sun house kind of feel to the middle section on it and stuff so it's yeah i suppose it's kind of bluesy alternative rock so yeah so that and you've not you've not done that you say you just written that song recently so you've not done a version of that well the band's done it you said but you've not really recorded that we, released it yet so people can't hear the band's version no, yet no. but they will be able to yeah I know the, that's, we've got we have uh we've got a, a, a double again this is an exclusive for you because we've not announced it yet. <laughs> uh, but we have got a double single coming out, uh, hopefully in the next kind of month or so. Uh, that in lockdown we've made videos for and, and stuff, and it's like the video works as like one long continuous piece because it's it kind of explores two sides of a relationship really. So it's like it's two songs put together, but two very different styles as well. So we've got that coming out soon. So oh, brilliant. That sounds good then. Wants to, be so, yeah, I'll tag you in the post and so that's so anyone watching this wants to follow the page and keep up with all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, they can do. So that's really good. Um, so let's move into section two, shall we? This is where I ask my guest for a, a songwriting tip. 
Um, I feel like that's a good one that you've just already shared about the rapid verses and then slowing the them down. The rapid verses from is, all uh, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that sounds like a good one. But um, have you got another another songwriting tip for us, uh, Chris? And just, I, I'm a firm believer, it doesn't matter what time of day it is, how drunk you are, how tired you are, if you get an idea in your head, I think the, uh, the key thing is just write it down, even if it's just a line. Um, the amount of songs I've got out of three o'clock in the morning going, oh, well, that's a good thing that so-and-so just said in the pub as we were leaving. Yeah. And I'll write it down and in my notes. And I won't remember it until I, like, periodically I'll go through, because all my songs are in my phone. I write everything in my phone. And uh, periodically I'll just go through and almost have a clear out just to go, oh, I wonder what that was, wonder what that was. I found some real gems. I found some really cringeworthy stuff as well. <laughs> but I think just write it down because at some point you'll go back to it. And sometimes it's a line, sometimes it's a whole song. I mean, I've, I've sometimes gone through and just found a poem that then works into a song or whatever. But I think in the moment that you get the idea, make sure you write it somewhere so that it's not one of those things that you then go, oh, how, how did I say that? What did I say again? Um, and I think that that's certainly helped me with moving on my uh, sorry um, bloody messages um, <laughs> yeah that's certainly helped me in terms of making sure I was writing and giving me because it's, it's that thing as well that if you have a, a lean spell which I mean when Who Do Operate has finished I, I didn't write for so long after that but what I did do was because I was starting to do CPSD stuff, I started almost having a a cleanse of all the lyrics that I'd written that never got used for Who Do Operator songs. So I went through them and went, well, actually this could work. And, and then these songs all then, a lot of them became the start of CPSD. Even though the styles were completely different, I had those lyrics sat there and I tend to work lyrics first. So, um, so it was really good to have this whole database of songs that had never been used. It kind of gave me a starting point, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's my tip is if you get the idea, write it down. Yeah, yeah, start everything there. That's, yeah, that's a good one. Well, when you first started, that reminded me of something that cause you said about, you know, no matter how, if you, how drunk you are, how tired you are, anything like that, and when an idea comes. There's something what I remember Leonard Cohen talking about where he said that when he was working on a song, you know, Leonard Cohen famously spent years and years on songs but he'd try and summon every part of himself. So he thought mm. of himself like, like dr what would drunk Leonard Cohen, how would drunk Leonard Cohen approach this song? How would normal yeah. Leonard Cohen approach this How would tired Leonard Cohen approach this song? So he purposely put himself in all these different states to then see how that version of him writes the song, Yeah, <laughs> which I just thought was really interesting and like very disciplined as well. Like, I think he, he said I could stay up all night and then try writing it first thing in the morning whilst we've been up all yeah. night. Stuff like that, just because that brings out a different side of your personality, which might attack it in a different way. Well, that's that's what I mean. It's like some of those things that you write down, like uh, uh, when you are literally just about to go to sleep, or when you are so drunk that you can barely stop the room from spinning. You know, and and you go, oh, this this seems like good. And then you read it the next day, and some of them you go, oh, that's really cool. Actually, that yeah. work is. And some yeah. of them are just hilarious as well. It, <laughs> it gives you a proper laugh. I like what the hell? I had one one literally a couple of weeks back, and I was saying to Gail, I don't have, I don't remember writing it, but I woke up in the morning. I had a note in my phone saying, "I don't care, Karen. I don't care what's in your feed," and I'm looking at it going, "I have no <laughs> recollection of writing that, or who Karen is." <laughs> it was like it was it was mental. Uh, I look forward yeah, to hearing the finished song of it in a few years. <laughs> 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 yeah great stuff Chris uh, so let's move into section three show so this is where I ask my guests yeah. to choose a song that's uh, meaningful to them in some way relating to end of life and bereavement um, so what song have you chose for us Chris so I went for Jason Isbell Elephant um, and not... also just part of your so that if, if anyone's watching this at home I've put the link for the song in the description so you can go and have a listen to the song and then come back to hear us talk about it uh, if you're not familiar with it already sorry Chris you see you soon no, no, you, you should check it out. It's awesome. <laughs> it's, uh, but yeah, I would think there's no like specific song that I can say relates to a bereavement for myself uh, in terms of, I can't say, oh, well, this song reminds me of this. I mean, there's 
Johnny Cash will always remind me of my dad. Uh, and I think the reason I chose this song, though, was I think my old love of country music and and that style came out of, of my dad's influence. Uh, and this song is, is lyrically about dealing with something that is is just really heavy so I, I don't actually know if it's from true personal experience or whether he's writing just in the place of a character in this story uh, I've read a little bit on it but I, I don't know if it's actually from a true story for him but the way he's brought effectively about a relationship with a girl who's got terminal illness and and is dying and they're still trying to almost ignore the fact that she's ill uh, whilst they're building this relationship and it's lyrically some of it's quite on the nose but it's it's just such a the way he paints the picture with the words he chooses and the vibe of it, even down to the way it's recorded everything about this record is just it makes you really kind of almost put yourself in that position of man what what would what would you feel like in that situation and you know the concept of just ignoring the fact that she's ill um, and knowing what's going to happen. I just think it's just, it, as a song, it's probably one of the best songs I think that's been written, certainly in the last last 10 years. Um, and yeah, I just urge everyone to check it out because it is brilliant. It is, yeah, it's a very powerfully crafted um, song. And, and like you say, it's that, I suppose on the country music especially, we really can nail that story yeah, and make, make a story so powerful and so, in such yeah. a short amount of time because and so the, the they say the title's elephant and the so the way it comes around is it's um trying trying to ignore the elephant in the room isn't it yeah which is the fact that she's dying and um and it also kind of felt like a very velvet choice so i plan to post this on um monday which is the start of dying matters week which is all about encouraging people to talk about death and dying yeah so that it's kind of you know uh, the songs relevant to that of people ignoring yeah trying not to talk about it yeah i think i think it's one of the, the it is one of the things that always drew me to country music as well is is this once you get the good country the uh forget about kind of what what nashville pedals out but once you dig a little bit deeper some of the songwriters the way that they can tell a story uh and deal with because everything's dealing with death or dealing with bad habits or dealing with somebody leaving somebody you know it's 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 dealing with life issues but um the way that they structure the words if you get a good writer you get somebody like jason isbell or, or chris stapleton's another great writer as well uh drive-by truckers do some great stuff you know which i think jason isbell came from drive-by truckers didn't they oh, did uh, but uh yeah i mean once you kind of dig a little bit deeper some of the country songwriters just have the best ways to describe getting through and dealing with these things and it's like it's almost like sometimes it's like a cathartic kind of experience for them just to kind of just literally pour out everything um, and i think that's always drawn me to country stuff as well yeah what if, what's, your, what's this is just literally going to as we're talking is um what this one does and i said i had ian siegel on this um on the podcast a little uh, weeks ago and his choice was george jones um he stopped loving her today yeah, a great country song, and um, both of them have this kind of, which I guess is another common thing in country music, where the chorus, like you, you just hearing what the chorus was about in a way, or the, the theme of it, um, related to the title, I guess, um, you might get a different picture of what the song is going to be about, and then it's the, yeah. the narrative leading up to it, which then sets the scene of then why it's so like you know he stopped living her today is it's not it's because she's died and because he'd said he'd love her till she died. But if you just heard, just, you know, stop loving today, it might be just a breakup song. Um, yeah, yeah. And same with the elephant, well, I guess like, it's like, uh, it could be any elephant in the room, but the way it sets up the story, but, oh, that's what the elephant in the room is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's like, uh, what's, what's the song? You know, You Are My Sunshine. Yeah. You know, the the old song, You Are My Sunshine, My Only Sunshine. Have you have you ever heard the lyrics to the verses? I think I've, I can't remember how many verses are there. I've heard, I've heard, because Johnny Cash did a version anyway, he did a couple of versions, but I don't think I've heard them all now. But yeah, the, so there's, there's like, there's lo it's basically about a guy killing himself. Yeah. It's, it's that little bit that you sing to your kids is a beautiful melody and a lovely lyric, but you listen to and read the rest of the lyrics to that song. And it's about, about a guy who 
who's lost his love and he's going to kill himself and he's like again it's that's country tradition isn't it it's 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 making sure you make it just palatable enough <laughs> <laughs> but then you know look deeper and and it's there's a dark kind of side to it and uh, yeah. as there is with everything you know and it's like i say it's it's one of the things that i certainly am forever drawn to country music because of it uh, because i just love the kind of the light and shade and and i like people that sing true things about what's going on in their lives you know yeah, yeah. i think that tends to have the most kind of power yeah that's great chris that seems like a good a good point to conclude this uh, interview so um so thanks again for joining me and uh, thanks for all the support you've given to on Sam over the over the years no really no worries it. Uh, uh thank you for having me lovely to see you yeah likewise uh, they're safe and well yeah and uh I encourage you in watching this to follow follow CPSD and follow Chris's uh, upcoming releases and stuff like that. And hopefully, um, go to go to some live gigs again in the near future. Hopefully, we've got yeah. September yeah. marked at the minute. Hopefully, yeah, fingers <laughs> crossed. <We'll see. laughs> okay, thanks everyone. I'll be back with another episode soon.